Welcome back, Zero. Welcome back, Zerka fans, to Nanalyze the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are having a 3v3. Bit more of a typical thing than that lobster pot game we just did. It's going to be Mumble Clan. It's North Chilean G playing air, Topcac playing tanks, and Zagara on shields against Northside, which is. I'm not sure. I guess it's just a mix. Mountain 12, Hokomoko. Or Mountain 12 on tanks, Hokomoko on cloakies, and. What? Is Maj up to? Maj is up to air. Okay, cool. So, air, pretty early on. Bear in mind, this is the latest version. Like, this is going to be. Or this is 150? Yeah, 1750. So, yeah, we are in a situation where we could theoretically see sparrows. I don't think we had any last game, but it was a lobster pod game, so I could have just missed it. This game, I don't know. I don't think so, just because both sides have an air factory. The thing with the sparrow is that I could see it being useful in 1v1 and 2v2, particularly. 3v3, maybe, not necessarily so much on a map like Comet Catcher, but at the same time, that would open up Maj to go for vehicles or something on the western side of the map to have an easier time holding the western side of the map. <clears throat> so I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I think, especially when the current meta, I don't see it happening for threes. I see it happening for twos, because twos you don't often see air starts, but threes you almost always see air starts. Almost always. It's like every single game. So, unlikely to see Sparrows. But... I don't know. Again, sparrows are more useful in the mid-game anyway. Once you get to the point where your opponents have enough defenses that raiders can't easily get in and start seeing what's going on, that's when I'd say sparrows start to shine a little bit. Actually, that being said, though, Hokumoko going in with size. They don't even want to bother. They just want to get cloaked units, walk them straight in, and see what the heck's going on. And I understand that. I respect that. Especially in threes where your opponents or your teammates are still building up workers and so forth. You don't have to worry about what you build up. You just get your scythe. And then you send your scythe forward. And then you have enough energy to make sure that the site does not decloak automatically. Good. North team's good. And otherwise, yeah, just sort of get in. But this is what I mean. I mean the thing is, though, like, again, there are too many swifts. So I like the use of sites because sites are going to be the best way to actually get in and get some scouting. Assuming they don't get spotted, though. At the same time, everyone else is sending in a few units here and there just to find something. You know, find some way of getting in and getting some scouting going. Still a good call, I think. Same time, though, Swifts are on both sides, so you can't really be too careful. That being said, Topcac, I feel like they're they're the ones that are really forced to hold the line right now. I mean, considering the way that everyone started out here, the eastern and western side of the map for the Mumble Clan team is just harder to build up. They're having a harder time getting their economy up as quickly as North team. Now, North Team's struggling a little bit with energy, but South Team is just not really able to get their metal extractors as quickly just because of how they plopped. And that's really important. That's one of the reasons I was saying, you know, air start, maybe, maybe not. But well, still, I love the way the North start, started up because they're reasonably close to each other for defense, but they're far enough away that... Oh, well, that scythe was wasted. Or, wait. What? No, it wasn't. There's the scythe. I mean, actually, not wasted at all. This is the thing about air, is that, you know, the air start happening on the western side of the map. This scythe can kind of just go around as the swifts keep taking passes at it. The scythe spends long enough not taking damage. It, no, it's not going to last long enough. I mean, if it does take long enough to taking damage, it will cloak. But that's not happening. Still, though, two me three metal extractors for a scythe is not a bad trade. Especially in the back line. But yeah, like I said, whoever starts air is kind of the weak link as far as defenses go. They can't hold the ground. They can't stop cloaked units just by having units in the way. So that is a really important point. Like that's a thing I kind of like the way it's set up. At least as far as the strategy on the north side goes. Like they have air here as well, but it's not as hard for Okamoka to come in and help defend. And again, the eastern side of the map, it's pretty well taken. It's it's all solid. So nothing really to worry about. Manitoul's got that unlocked. Mumble Clan. The only thing. I mean, I guess both players, both teams are accessing. Can't really say it's the only thing for Mumble Clan. Both teams are having this bit of a problem. Really, neither side has seemed to have built up a whole lot of caretakers or workers. I mean, we're seeing Mono 12 getting that set up. We already see the Hokomoko had been on path to or on track for that. The airplane plant's the only factory that hasn't gotten any real build assistance, and none planned either. So that's what seventy build power on top of the workers. That's not too bad. I mean, that's another five workers or so in the commander. Yeah that's, yeah, that's fine. Should be enough to use all the metal. 
Mumble Clan, on the other hand, yeah, they don't have much production of any kind. They are they have been accessing for a while and pretty hard. So as we can see already, the north side, they've taken most of the metal. Whereas the south side, not so much. So that's having a much harder time actually maintaining the metal or even getting the metal in the first place. Now that being said, nice defense is being set up here by by Seguero, so at least there's no easy way for a scythe to get back in here. That is one key thing. Not sure how much it'll matter, but yeah, there's a key thing. So with that closed off, at least partially, and I say, well, even then, no, scythe can still get in here. I honestly, there's another scythe coming in. There's four scythes coming in, and there's no opening for... Oh, no, I guess there is. Yeah, there is! Stardust doesn't have the range. That's the key thing here. The Stardust actually does not have the range to work with this, so these scythes can just waltz right in here. They'll talk... They'll... They'll talk to... They'll chat with the Lotus for a little while. Death chat. Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. Sorry, the range indicators are wrong! Because it is, in fact, able to hit longer, despite the defense indicators. Because it is on a hill. Because that is how hills work. Well, that is how hills work for ballistic projectiles. I should say. Not for lasers. Lasers do not benefit. But ballistic projectiles and plasma projectiles do. So, never mind. That that one's doing fine. So, Jumbot Factory. No real plans here. But Maj, getting the ground source in Jumbot Factory. As the north side, yeah, they have triple digit income. They have the advantage. They're in a solid position. Not doing too bad overall. Eastern side being the one thing I'd be a bit concerned about. As well as the fact that a lot of these sides aren't really able to do much. I mean, two sides are left. I'm a bit surprised there aren't attempts to push in along here. But there aren't. And again, this is actually where I'd, I'd like to see sparrows. I know it sounds silly because you're thinking, well, there's swifts all over the place. It's like, yeah, but that's, that's fine. I mean, we're not going to be seeing swifts come in here to actually deal much or do much scouting or deal much damage. We're not going to see anything else really come in to try to attack. The Owl is up, so that's fair. But the Owl doesn't seem to be going in far enough. It's more a matter of cost-benefit. Like, if Sparrow could just go in there, it'll die, but it'll see a lot in the process. And that information could be worth 200 metal. Or, it's, even, it's not even 200 metal. No, it's not even 200 metal, what am I saying? It's 175 metal. Okay, it's close enough. Still, though, the northern side, like I said, they found that opening. Realized, oh, hey, you just go in here. Oh, there they go. There they go. There's the sides. Actually, taking the risk. Moving, creeping slowly in Hokomoka, just making sure that there's actually a safe way of getting in here. And there certainly is. As long as they just go in, they'll be fine. Nothing is going to attack them. Uh, there's even holes between the defenses. Like, only one Lotus in each section. The sides can take out the Lotus, no problem. They go around the back, take out the factory, take out the caretakers, which admittedly, Mumble Clan has built a sufficient number of. So, fair enough, Mumble Clan's actually doing fine for their economy. But that took them a while to build up. I took them a good long time to get their economy into a halfway decent position, which at this point is starting to become scary. So, I'll grant that is a bit of an issue, especially as... Well, okay, this Minotaur's not doing too much. But this Shield Ball is becoming a bit of a problem. Nothing's really here to defend it. No forces, no Air Force coming in to self-respond. Nothing on the ground really ready to help respond. There is a Leco that is going to be able to get rid of about half the Shield Ball. But the rest of it is pretty much uncontested. I mean, the Emissary is certainly trying, but it's not going to be able to do much good. However, the front lines, at least further reinforcements, will be prevented. Clay's coming in. No, you, you can't beat the Outlaw. You can try. The numbers definitely work okay, I guess, but that is a lot of Outlaw. That, like, that was, what, five? No, that was a dozen Glaives to one Outlaw, and the Outlaw's not even dead. But hey, the Blitz coming in here, good choice. Get that status damage on those shields. Get them down a little bit faster. And hey, why not get them stunned at the same time? So I like that call. And of course, the Lico is up, but I think that's... Oh wait, it's another Lico up. What am I saying? Where's the Lico? Oh, I see. Both sides are just going for the Lico. Fair enough. Yeah, this shield ball. Weapon of the shield ball with Lico will be a problem. I don't think that's the option here. I think the Lico is actually going to be used as a way of breaking the front lines or possibly breaking these Minotaurs, which are causing problems. I mean, as much as I'm giving Mumble Clan a lot of credit for their economy and their territory play, they have not been building up a very strong economy. Or sorry, very strong military. Their military has been wide, they've been cracked wide open by a small shield ball, a thug law. And then a few Minotaurs in the front lines. There's not really a whole lot that's inspiring confidence as far as being able to defend against attacks, and that is exactly what Mumble Clan has taken advantage of. 
I mean, all these metal extractors going down. None of the power plants going down, though. Metal extractors aren't the biggest blow. It's still bad, though. Like, still, but four, five metal extractors? No. It's like 10 metal extractors at this point. That's 20 metal per second. That's not nothing. So, it's a bit of a challenge. Right now, we do have at least the shield ball dead. Galico did his job defensively. But again, a lot of damage is dealt in the process, and the, the rebuilding effort is going to be considerably impeded by the fact that, at the same time, the Mumble Clan team, particularly Sigero, has just been claw just been clawing in on the eastern side of the map, ready to take on Manitou's commander, just generally holding the line as far as all these metal extractors that were destroyed. So a great deal of territory being claimed by Mumble Clan. A little late into the game, but it's fine. As long as you're able to turn that into a military and turn that into more territory advantage, they will be able to take this game with that push, or at least... That push will put them in, a, in an advantageous position. Still, though, North Side isn't behind on economy. It's simply at parity. So, care still needs to be taken with all these units, with all these forces being sent around the map. It can't be used carelessly because it's not like North Side's on the ropes. In fact, they're rebuilding very quickly, so it's even then, it's actually it's doing just fine. Just a matter of getting rid of all these forces here, but again, the emissaries, those beat out the Roman and no problem. All anything has to do after that is walk in and start taking the metal extractors, and then it's fine. Of course, a bit of a repeat of the last game, where we have emissary on emissary combat, but not as much anti-air, so it's a bit easier to take out the emissaries. The snipers could theoretically as well, for the fact that these bandits were very cleverly being used to stop that from happening. Because, yeah, that's a really good call. Still, Glaive's coming in here, able to take out the bandits, which means that the sniper, the phantoms, we'll be able to walk in, take out the minotaurs, take out the, take out the emissaries, and open things up again. Really just making it that much harder for Mumble Clan to continue pushing forward. While on the north side, I mean, they're winning this fight. They're taking the reclaim at the very least, and they're turning that into even more army. Well, more glaives primarily, but still more army. More glaives, more raptors, some power plants, and a lot of emissaries. Just continuing to push that emissary line while wiping out their opponent's emissary line. The north side turning that into a great attrition fight, but at the same time, a lot of Minotaurs coming in here. If they're not stopped, that is still going to be Mumble Clan taking back the advantage. But two of the Minotaurs are near death. One of the Minotaurs, are, or sorry, one of the Minotaurs and the Ogres are near death. And the Ogres not able to do as much, actually not able to do anything. The Minotaurs, at this point, up, up next to the Welders, being blocked, being body blocked by them specifically, but still able to get rid of some of the Stingers. It may not be enough, however. Raven's coming in, taking out, or at least heavily damaging this Minotaur. But Sai is coming in the back lines. The Emissaries add is the real story, as they are able to come back in here, and not a whole lot of damage is being dealt to those Sai's. Not in time. The Emissary line has been wiped out for Manu 12. They have several in production, or they had several in production, but there's only two on the field. Well, one on the field, one in production. That's still a massive opening. At this point, Mumble Clan can just go safely into this wreckage field, safely into these metal extractors, and not have to worry about any kind of artillery. Yes, the Phantoms, sure, but Glaives can counter those. However, for their heavier units, they just can walk straight in. Now these Minotaurs are emboldened, walking straight into this base. No worries whatsoever. Getting rid of the Stingers, getting rid of the Welders. The Gallus turret is not a problem at all. The Glaives will be, but even then, Fan Phoenix is coming in here to at least slow things down is going to be a nice touch. However, the Minotaurs were a bit out of position for the support forces, and the Emissaries aren't able to help out either. So unfortunately for the Mumble Clan, they did just donate a bunch of extra metal. Trying to save it, but not quite. Those Emissaries... Those... This giant metal field still effectively under the control of the Northern team. That is 6,000 metal they can take for effectively free. Same time, though, a lot of Skydusts being set up along the perimeter just to secure that front line in the very center. Now, that being said, the east and west front line, not quite so strong. More, more so the west front line, and again, this is exactly what I was talking about as far as the fact blob situation goes. I realize 14 minutes into the game, the fact blob situation shouldn't matter too much, but bear in mind, no real additional factors have been built. The power of mobile units is still being protected from the center for the Mumble Clan, whereas the north side, they can project from all, like, all sides of the map. It's only the eastern, very, very eastern edge that the northern side can't really quickly get units in there to respond. Everywhere else is no problem. And at the same time, Puppy's coming in here, taking that reclaim field. Risky move, but I understand. The idea, of course, being get a bunch of puppies out. They're a little hard to counter for all these heavier units. And the reclaim, it's taken away from your opponents. Because I think at this point, what Hokomoko is thinking, or, well, the entire North team is thinking, not so much Hokomoko, is 
this reclaim field is contested. There's no easy way to take it, but if we turn it into puppies, that's a very fast way of taking the reclaim that doesn't involve so much build power being at risk. So why not do that? Get a bunch of puppies for free, get where reclaim we can despite that, and then that way there's not as much reclaim for the Mumble Clan to take. While also using cheap, like using what, 50 cost units? So that, that was a really smart move. I like that. Not sure where the puppies are going to be used, though. I mean, obviously, you want to actually apply them onto something to kill it. Wipe out a large chunk of your opponent's force. Maybe as a defensive response, because, of course, there are glaives coming in that will be dealing a lot of damage. And those are difficult to deal with, even with phoenixes. As we're demonstrating right now... And think about the size. Why are size... Size are not going to counter outlaws. Why are size coming in here? The outlaws will kill them all. They... Yeah, get one shot in and that's it. That's... I don't understand the use of the size in that shot, in that fight. I mean, the Ravens make some additional sense. They can at least come in here, dive down, hit the outlaws, which is not what they're going for. They're going for the thugs instead. We have an odd choice. Two Ravens go down in the process. Three Ravens go down in the process as a result. No real success there. The Blitz is, however, that is the answer, or at least a much better answer than we've pre seen previously. So the eastern side, the defense is still in a reasonably good position. And still, though, this is exactly the same thing we saw before. Again, this is why I talk about Factplop, is that this eastern edge is the very vulnerable point that Sigero keeps hitting, because there's no easy way for defenses to be built up right there. Like, honestly, I think if the north team takes this back, building another factory along this corridor might not be a bad idea. Not sure what kind of factory, though, considering what they're up against, but shield, probably. Just get shields of their own. Just something tough to defend. Although, I suppose for fast response, shield isn't the best option. Regardless, something. Like, some way of holding on this, building up units further to the front line. That being said, though, it's not like North Team is taking this sitting down. I mean, we have loads and loads and loads of Ronin coming in here. Well, 12 Ronin coming in here. Still feels like a lot. Along alongside about a dozen Glaives, breaking through the defenses. Actually breaking through very nicely through the defenses. The Swift's trying to stop them, but the Glaives should be able to take out a Metal Extractor or two. Alongside the Ronin wiping out the Stardust... That will be more than enough to actually take out this entire defensive line on the western side of the map. And again, nothing else has really been built to stop this. The Glaives, however, have been taken down. The combination of Phoenixes and Swifts able to stop that. But that Stardust has been opened up. And with the amount of production capacity that Northside has, they could theoretically build up another large army like that and push in as a follow-up. But I don't see it happening. In fact, that does feel like a bit of a metal donation, all things considered. I think the one thing here that's kind of going in favor of the northern side is that there aren't any workers at the western side of the map. Because, again, the factory is way far away. So that's not likely happening. Oh, not to mention. Oh, that's a shame. Hovercraft being completely sh taken out. Not even able to be used. Just doing nothing. That's unfortunate. Still, though, center of the map being gradually pushed in. The eastern side of the map has been rebuilt. There is at least these puppies as a response for us, just in case the ghetto tries, and tries anything clever. But that may not be necessary. The Dante providing enough pressure, I think, that's going to be able to possibly... Uh, or maybe wipe out the Emissaries? Theoretically, should be able to wipe out the Emissaries. But that's a question of how daring North Team is willing to be, which the answer is not very. And it may not matter. I kind of wish the Dante had gone forward. It could have at least killed the Emissaries before dying. That being said, it is still in the middle of North Side territory, so reclaim is possible. However, there's Sigurdo coming in for another assault. Not going for the weaker section, though. Going straight for the Emissaries. Trying to take them out directly. Hokumoku's commander, however, is in a much better position to defend against this. At least against a couple of them. But there's the Phoenixes to finish this off. There's the Glaives going down. With more Glaive support coming in from Hokumoku. Two Emissaries do go down, but that's not nearly enough to wait about the entire line. So we're still seeing Northside maintaining a relatively strong position as far as their artillery force goes. And thus, as far as maintaining the front line goes. Mumble Clan, however, continues to push in, continues to apply pressure, actually sp spots the Trinity being built up. So this is not going to be a very decisive Trinity for the North team. I mean, it wasn't a bad idea, but a little bit far forward. So I don't think you actually have to have it that far forward. I'm fairly certain that if you... Like, Trinity's... Oh, what's... Oh, let's see. Trinity range is long enough. There is, yeah, it's, it's going to hit across the map. They could have done in the top left corner and not had any issues. So I'm not quite sure where the Trinity. Not quite sure the motivation was for the Trinity being this far south and this close to the opponents. Because now it's been spotted. Now we're going to get anti nukes built up. Now, unless the point was to lightly build a Trinity in order to trigger their opponents building anti nukes in order to set up an anti nuke, anti anti nuke defense, maybe that's a possibility. 
but I don't expect that to happen. I think what'll end up happening is that the the anti nukes won't be built up because the nuke is so far away from completion. And I'm pretty sure the North Side saw that. Like it's there's not a whole lot going into it, so I don't think Mumble Clan is too worried about building an anti nuke anytime soon. I mean, they have seven minutes before they have to worry about it, and I think they know it. Honestly, though, their bigger concern is going to be holding the front lines. Because these forces are being forced back. I mean, the Lee coach is taking out most of them. The Emissary is the only thing really left holding the lines. And even then, it may not matter. Here's that follow-up force I was talking about before. The Glaives and Ronin coming in here. I mean, thankfully for the South team, they managed to build up all those maces in time. But there's that follow-up force. There's the concern. There's Northside continuing the relentless assaults. And also taking the Metal Extractor. I really like that. That is bold. But it works. Same time, though, there's continued assault forces coming in here trying to deal with this but no it's not gonna happen actually looks like looks like north side is confident the emissaries are completely undefended and nothing's gonna stop these puppies from getting in there and wiping out the entire line of emissaries also getting a few more in their numbers too thanks to reclaim <laughs> losing hardly any in the process while also getting rid of all the emissaries while also taking out some of the racketeers and probably gonna take out the stardust the stardust should be able to destroy them but hey the puppies were quite efficient there it is that one last emissary being taken out might be one or two more, but nothing in the front lines. Nothing that's being a concern. So now the north side's the one that's completely confident they can take in the center without having to worry about being destroyed by emissaries. And that leaves them the confidence to go with the Dantes. Same time, though. Oh, wow. Holy... What the heck? Was that just... Oh, I see. Kodachi coming in. Like, what is all this fire coming from? Oh, raiding Kodachi's from the back lines. Yeah, that makes sense. Top Cactus coming in there with a daring Kodachi raid. Dealing a fair bit of damage, but North has so much power. They have a Singularity Reactor. If they lose some solar plants, it's not a big deal. If they lose some Metal Reactors, it's really not a big deal. They have Overdrive to make up for it. But yeah, I like the use of Kodachis here. I mean, with the Artillery Force, it's always good to shift back to Raiders once in a while, just to be able to keep your opponent on their toes. However, Scorpion coming in here, wiping out the Maces. From here, should be no problem for the Ronin to get in here, wipe out the Maces, or the Scorpion itself to wipe out the Maces. Stardust is already down, too, so no real defenses are in place to stop the Scorpion Ronin push from getting in here and wiping out everything being built up. The Kodachi is being the only real trouble right now, and honestly, they're not too hard to get rid of. Raven's coming in here once in a while. The Raven gets in, the Raven bombs, the Kodachi dies, and that is it for the raid. So Northside, while they have taken a lot of damage, it's in their base, it's easy to rebuild. Not a whole lot was destroyed as far as production capacity, and a lot has been destroyed as far as Mumble Clan's attempt at follow-up assaults in the front lines. Well, granted, Mumble Clan has managed to gain a lot more ground. I don't see them being able to hold it that well, while at the same time, there's a lot of reclaim here. It's like, 2,000 metal reclaim here, and... Okay, 6,000 metal... Wait. Oh, I see, that's why. Yeah, the 6,000 metal reclaim is most of these commanders. Well, like, Dante's... Yeah, that's right, most of these Dante's. Which, those should be easy enough to reclaim, at least split between them. But North is one prioritizing reclaim, so it does still work out. Well, at the same time, North is also with the Scorpion in the back lines. It should be recharged. The Leaco doesn't know where the heck to look for it. Finally finding it, but that's when North Chilean G's commander taking a lot of damage. And the Leaco's not even enough to take it out. North Chilean G should have their commander... Yeah, they're going to lose the commander. 12,000 HP is more than enough to survive this. <clears throat> So the scalpels coming in here should be able to finish the job. Like one or two scalpel or two scalpel volleys will take out the scorpion. And there's the first one, totally misses. And the second one totally misses as well. The scorpion able to cloak and get away. The flea should be able to spot it in time, but I think the scorpion should be able to actually take out the. Oh, never mind. There's the first volley. Second volley should be falling up soon enough. If not, the flea is just coming in and taking it out. So yeah, that scorpion trying its best to hold on, but its main cannons are at the front. And it's not going to be enough. The flea should... Oh, who's going to be able to take it out? Nope. Scorpion's still alive. If the scorpion's alive long enough to repair... No! The scorpion doesn't get repaired. Oh, so close. So freaking close. That scorpion could have gotten repaired. Could have gone right back in there. Would have been a great push. But not happening. Still, though, the front line, three Dantes for the north side, is a pretty telling position. And not just a telling position. That is a position where there is no easy way of pushing back. I mean, there's racketeers. They're going to help. But they can only do so much disarm damage. And Northside does have the economic advantage. They do actually have that trinity up. And there's only 10 seconds left before it starts being set up. And where's the anti-nuke? Oh my goodness. Okay, so looking at the board, looking at the field, there is no anti-nuke. 
the South team was so confident that, that Trinity was either a ploy, just as a mind game, or at least was not really relevant that... Oh, never mind. Sorry, it's three minutes left. My bad. My bad. North team still has another three minutes before it's done. Although, I think South team realizes... They, they, they can still see that it's finished. Like, they know that the Trinity is completed, so they'll know, okay, we got three minutes to set up an Antinuke. Wow, I feel silly. Sorry about that. A little bit off. The Antinuke is not necessary yet. Not for another three minutes. Ooh, Widow went down, though. Look at that. Use the Widow. Come in there. Dante's actually being taken out by the Racketeers as well. I was a bit wrong in my earlier prediction. Between the Widow and the Racketeers, those Dantes are still having a bit of a hard time pushing forward in the front lines. And at the same time, the only thing stopping the Trinity from being taken out is the terraforming. So Minotaurs, one of them being dug into a hole, the other one shouldn't survive too long thanks to that sniper. But that's still a pushback. The western side has been heavily damaged, and more and more Dantes are being destroyed in the process. There's only three left out of four. Another one coming in the back, another one on production. So Dantes are still being regularly produced. Minor 12 on it, but losing a lot of it in the process. Of course, the question is, where are the workers? And they are indeed right here. They are indeed setting up to reclaim. So north side not losing much. That's always the important thing. If you can hold on to your reclaim, you'll be fine. All right, holding on to the reclaim is always the key thing. Because if you lose units and you get the reclaim back, you're at least only out for 60% of the cost of the unit. You're not out for 140% of the cost of the unit because you gave your opponents a 40% metal advantage off the units you lost. So... It's always good to have the workers just back there, especially in big games like this. Or, small teams, granted, but in team games like this, when you have more than 1v1. Even 1v1 is not a bad idea, but heavier units come out more often in these big team games. That is still going to be... I mean, it's still... Now, the Dante is still going to be a concern. We do see the western side. We're getting yet another assault. Scalpels, however, are in position. Not a whole lot is going to be able to deal with this. I don't see... The Ronin beating the Scalpels that easily. I mean, they're going to try, and it's certainly going to deal a lot of damage. What about a few of them? But Scalpels have homing missiles with better splash damage, and they can kite more easily. I mean, the Ronin are going to try, and the Glaives are going to come in as a bit of support, but then again, I got in the Lotuses. Get into Lotus and you die. So, good job, Scalpels. Good job, Lotuses. Western side, however, is still conquered up to here. Like, there is this, this is the line, and there's no easy pushing past it. North side remaining at an advantage while Mumble Clan. Did they just have 1.9k metal briefly? That's pretty cool. Anyway, no, North side is still kind of at a territory advantage. The Mumble Clan, however, I kind of like that they are still being aggressive in Reclaim. They have their Paladin up as well, turning that Reclaim into a very powerful assault force. At the same time, the Cornea has been built up to try to make sure the Dantes are a little bit more protected. Because, of course, they should. The yeah, Corneas are always good. Always, always, always good to have a Cornea, especially when you're trying to fight against a individually stronger enemy like a paladin but it may not matter as the trinity has fired its nuke north Chilean chain in the, in the chat saying spoiler watch the trinity it's like yeah that's a fair point that is going to be a that's going to be pain where is that going to be pain no seriously where's it gonna be pain i don't see it oh there it is oh the re <laughs> resign right before the trinity hits Weirdly perfect timing, but cool. Okay. Ah, oh, got away the shiny. We are right as the Trinity hits its mark. Mumble Clan throws in the towel, and that is game. So that was that was interesting. I did not expect the Trinity to actually have be uncontested going in. To be perfectly honest, I thought the Trinity would just get anti nuked, and that would be it. But nope. Didn't even, didn't even go for it. I guess they didn't think the Trinity would actually be built up and be used. But no, it was getting built up. It was being used. I mean, the Raptors... Or the, or the Raptors... The Minotaurs came in and tried to take it out, which definitely was worth trying. I'll give that. But because it didn't work, I, I feel kind of weird that there was no effort past that to then set up anti-nukes to deal with the fact that the attempt to get rid of the Trinity failed. So if you can't get rid of the Trinity, make the Trinity useless. Sadly, that did not happen, and as a result, Mumble Clan threw in the well, Mumble Clan they threw in the cow before the nuke hit, but the nuke would have hit where all the factories were built anyway. So it would have taken out the entire production capacity. It would have meant that North 
would have been essentially the only one able to build anything. Mumbleton would have been decapitated and just dying slowly at that point. Oh, you're 40 seconds. Okay, North Chilean G was actually right. They're on the southern team. Apparently, mentioning they had an anti up there, 40 seconds away, but the priority was going to the paladin, and not the anti, and that lost in the game. That is fair, and that is why priority really matters. And also, like, why did you? The, the anti is more important, but okay, sure. As we as we found out, as as was learned the hard way, the anti was more important. Overall, though, Mumble Clan was actually still behind. Like economically speaking, Mumble Clan was kind of behind-ish on metal income constantly behind a metal produced and used metal excess about even mumble clan definitely had it worse at the beginning both sides excessed quite a bit though metal reclaimed north team completely blew mumble clan out of the water same with energy income that was a huge part of it overdrive and reclaim is always huge in these games where territory gets taken rapidly so yeah that is going to be it thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed that we got to see shiny we got to see some big games. We got to see stuff that's not usual for this channel or the stream. But it also means that I can, like, I mean, people on YouTube, people on Twitch are watching this now. People on YouTube aren't going to be able to see this until next Friday. It's just the timing of how this is going to work. Because I'm going to be, the last tournament video, just the way it, I try to release one a day. So the last one's going to be released today. And then I guess tomorrow or Monday will be the first video of last week's stream. And then it'll be one a day. And this will be Friday or Saturday. Will be this particular cast. So unfortunately, Mana 12 was the one who requested this, and they weren't able to watch it live. They'll be, I mean, it'll be unlisted on YouTube. I think I'll link it to the replay, because I usually do, outside of tournaments. So that'll be watchable, but yeah, it won't be published until next Saturday, probably. Anyway, that's that, though. That's for me. That's all for any administrative talk. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.